Welcome to Environmental Cleaning Basics for Perioperative Areas, Part 1. This two-part series covers perioperative environmental infection control practices. Part 1 covers damp dusting prior to starting the first case and cleaning, disinfection at the end of each case. And Part 2 focuses on terminal cleaning. Recommended practices are based on current Association for Perioperative Registered Nurses guidelines. Check with your supervisor if your facility policy differs from the video instructions. Perioperative areas are high-risk procedure areas in healthcare facilities. Some examples are operating rooms in surgical and labor and delivery units, special procedure areas such as cardiac, catheterization, and interventional radiology, and sterile processing departments. The healthcare environment, including perioperative environmental surfaces, is a potential source for healthcare-associated infections. Dust and debris may harbor invisible germ contaminants that are a potential source of HAIs. Contributing factors to infection can vary depending on the germ involved, how easily it survives in the environment, and how it is transferred from the environment to susceptible patients. To reduce the risk of HAIs, staff must know how to properly clean and disinfect surfaces in perioperative areas and perform those processes correctly. Keeping the perioperative and procedure areas safe and clean requires a multidisciplinary team approach. On a multidisciplinary team, leaders from departments such as nursing, sterile processing, environmental services, and infection prevention and control collaborate on and oversee cleaning practices in the perioperative areas. The multidisciplinary team oversees the development of standard operating procedures for damp dusting, patient turnover cleaning, terminal cleaning, and scheduled or cycle cleaning. They develop guidelines for the selection and use of cleaning detergents and EPA-registered hospital disinfectants in the perioperative areas of the facility. The team also plans environmental cleaning routines for unusual events like construction, renovation, or disaster remediation. Staff assigned to perform environmental cleaning in perioperative areas need specialized training. They should demonstrate competency to perform environmental cleaning in perioperative areas before they are assigned to work independently. Staff working in the perioperative environment need to be familiar with the different perioperative areas, dress code requirements, and personal hygiene practices. Let's review these before we move on to the environmental cleaning portion of this training session. Perioperative settings have three different traffic areas unrestricted, semi-restricted, restricted. In unrestricted areas, staff can wear their usual work clothes or street clothes. In semi-restricted areas, staff are required to wear special clothing or surgical attire. The entrance to this area should be marked, such as with a red line on the floor. All personnel entering the semi-restricted areas should follow AORN guidelines for surgical attire, which include wearing clean scrub attire that has been laundered at a healthcare accredited laundry facility, disposable scrubs or bunny suits, long-sleeved scrub tops or jackets, disposable shoe covers or clean shoes that are dedicated for use within the perioperative area, disposable hoods or beard covers for staff with facial hair, and disposable surgical head covers or hoods that confine all hair and completely cover the ears, scalp, sideburns, and nape of the neck. All cloth head covers must be covered with a single-use surgical head cover or hood. Restricted areas include the operating room, OR suite, and other work areas when sterile supplies are opened and areas where scrubbed-in staff members are present. Restricted areas require a face mask in addition to the semi-restricted area attire requirements. When leaving the semi-restricted area for a break or for the day, all staff must remove and discard disposable shoe covers, masks, and gloves. Surgical head coverings do not need to be removed. Remember to perform hand hygiene before leaving the area. Surgical attire must remain on-site to be laundered and should not be worn home or worn in from outside the facility. Dress Code and Hygiene Review 
Staff in perioperative areas should have fingernails that are short, clean, and natural. Staff in perioperative areas are not allowed to wear acrylic or artificial nails or fillers. If nail polish is worn, it should be unchipped. Clothing underneath scrubs should not be visible. This includes turtlenecks or long sleeve t-shirts. Jewelry should be removed or contained under scrub attire, and earrings should be completely enclosed by the head covering. Perform cleaning and disinfection activities in a methodical pattern that limits the transmission of germs. Cleaning should progress from clean to dirty areas, from high to low, and in a clockwise or counterclockwise pattern. This ensures all areas are cleaned without any cross-contamination. Remember, after a dirty task to remove gloves, perform hand hygiene, and put on clean gloves before starting a new task. Proper use of cleaning equipment and chemicals. Dedicate environmental cleaning equipment and chemicals to the perioperative area so it is not used in any other part of the facility. Carts, cleaning tools, vacuums, and floor machines should be cleaned and disinfected daily after use, according to manufacturer's directions. Cleaning cloths and chemicals. Use non-linting cleaning cloths and mops. Dust formed by lint can move germs around the environment and spread infections. Fold and refold cloths while cleaning to use multiple clean surfaces. Replace the cloth as often as needed or whenever it comes into contact with the floor. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for mixing and handling cleaning and disinfectant chemicals. Allow the surface to remain wet with the disinfectant for the dwell time, defined as the time it takes for the disinfectant to kill germs. Reminder, never mix two cleaning chemicals together as this may be dangerous. Damp dusting is essential to maintaining a clean environment and reducing the risk of HAIs. Let's take a minute to review proper damp dusting technique. Never dry sweep or dry dust or perform any dust generating procedures in the perioperative areas. These actions stir up dust particles, which can ride air currents and spread germs around the room. Use the following best practice model to perform damp dusting in the operative suites. Dampen a microfiber high-reach dusting sock or a microfiber cloth with disinfectant. Wring out the cloth until it is damp, but not wet. Place it onto or wrap it around a high-reach tool. Spot clean the ceiling as needed and then perform the high dusting process. Wear appropriate PPE to prevent chemical exposure from splashing. Now that we have reviewed the three traffic areas, dress code requirements, personal hygiene practices, and environmental cleaning basics for the perioperative area, let's look at the different categories of cleaning done in these areas. These are four different cleaning categories in the perioperative areas. First case, damp dusting. Between case, turnover clean terminal clean, scheduled cleaning, cycle cleaning. We will now cover first case damp dusting and between case or turnover clean. In part two of the video series, we will cover terminal cleaning and scheduled or cycle cleaning. First case damp dusting is cleaning that is performed each day before the first surgical case or other invasive procedure to remove any dust that has settled since terminal cleaning. All horizontal surfaces such as furniture, surgical lights, booms, and equipment should be damp dusted. Between case or turnover clean is cleaning performed between cases during the day. Follow these steps. Check that the patient has left the room. Perform hand hygiene, assemble equipment, and put on clean gloves. Remove trash and linen and replace biohazard containers as needed. Spot clean from high to low, disinfecting any visible residue on the ceilings or overhead equipment. Clean and disinfect procedure lights and other overhead equipment that may have been touched during the previous case. Clean horizontal surfaces that may have been touched or contaminated, moving from cleanest to dirtiest. Disinfect light switches, door push plates and handles, mayo stands, hamper stands, kick buckets, telephones, keyboards, and other items as needed. Clean and disinfect the procedure bed and remote control. Spot clean walls. Anesthesia equipment should be cleaned between cases by the designated trained staff. Fold and refold the cleaning cloth when disinfecting and change it often during the process.
discard it if it touches the floor or is used to clean items such as wheels or casters. Mop the floor with a disinfectant around the procedure table if visibly soiled. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Place new linens on the procedure table and add new trash and linen bags in their respective hampers. Remember to close the OR doors after cleaning. Floors are considered to be dirty at all times in the perioperative area, so items that touch the floor for any amount of time are contaminated. This completes the between case cleaning information as well as part one of the basic infection prevention principles in perioperative areas video. Please watch the second video in this series for terminal or end of day cleaning and additional information about environmental cleaning in the perioperative area.